Eric Lagosa. Uh, Eric, first and foremost, um, how did you get into the field of racing? Uh, how did you get into the field of racing? Uh, how did you get into the field of racing? Uh, First and foremost, I just want to thank God because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. Um, so, the big adjustments I've made was so coming out of the draft, out of a junior college, competition is different. You know, not, a lot of guys are not throwing 95, you know, 98. Um, locating pitches, you know, and my job at my junior college was to just drive the ball. So, I had a fat leg kick and I was really aggressive and I swung pretty much at everything if you do it in the zone. But when it got to pro ball, it got exposed. And me, after my first year of pro ball, I had to, I was just high off life on being drafted, coming out of a junior college, when I didn't even think I was gonna play, you know, pro ball. I was, my goal was to play the baseball and I ended up getting drafted. So that confidence I had that year was strictly off of me just being excited to be a pro baseball player. And that first off season, I thought I wanted to pro ball when I was young. You know, I thought the more experience I just got playing, that I was going to get better. So that first off season, all I did was work out to try to get bigger. Because coming out of college, like the big thing in college baseball is like, oh, you got to be big, you got to be big, be big. And baseball players, you got out too big, you got to move your You know what I'm saying? It's not about being big. It's about you being explosive and you maximizing what you do with your body. So my first off season was stripped. I was strictly trying to be somebody I wasn't. I was trying to be a bodybuilder when I'm a baseball player. You know, so I didn't I didn't go I I didn't go seek out to hit find hitting coaches. I didn't really do anything. I just worked out and tried to get faster, you know. And twenty nineteen happened and twenty nineteen was a was an eye opener for me. Uh, it, was, it was probably a great thing to happen because it made me realize, made me learn from the game. You know, um, 2019 was a very sad uh, season for me as far as mentally. You know, I lost, kind of lost the person I was. Mentally, like, confidence was out the window because I wasn't, I never failed like that ever, you know. And coming to the field, not wanting to play because we didn't want your average to go down. It's not the, it's not the person you want to be on baseball field, you know. And... That 2019 off season, and actually coronavirus was a blessing for me because that gave me more time to build that confidence back up, to really work on my craft on being a baseball player, you know. And a big swing adjustment I've had was 2018. I had a fat leg kick, I was a big leg kick guy. And I was just athletic, so I would one day I'd look at. I'd look at Mookie, or I'd look at Mike Trout, or I'd look at Vladimir Guerrero, and I'd be like, oh, they're hitting. I'd look at Yelich. Oh, I'm going to hit like them. I'm going to try to hit like them today. You know what I'm saying? Instead of now, I look at myself. If I have a bad day, I look at good days of me. I don't try to look at other big leaguers because that's not me. So now I learn from myself. And the big change was I went from a leg kick to now like a hover. So my eyes are quiet. I'm able to recognize pitches better. You know, and I'm able to stay on my back leg a little longer to where I can put more force into the ball. And I noticed that too, when you were at Connecticut, it seemed like you were kind of over swing, kind of out of it, but I noticed it's a lot more compact, a lot more through the zone, and it does seem a lot quieter. And that, that's huge, especially if you talk about athletes, athletes come all different sizes, you're absolutely right. It's twitch. Everybody talks about that. It's a buzzword of baseball twitch. Okay. Would you say that's just more like the natural yeah. baseball instinct taking over with just your athleticism? Because you, I mean, you're very quick off the bag, and you use your speed very well, and you're a smart base runner. So, talk about it. I mean, it's, a lot of it has to do with baseball IQ. Yeah. So, I know when I get on base, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a four. Like I'm a when, when I get on base, things happen for the team. Mm -hmm. So me getting, me not getting on base, that hurts my team. Mm -hmm. So, me fighting with two strikes, me having that confidence, like a lot of my hits this year with two strikes, like, you still got to throw it over the plate, you know, my confidence is, like, if I get on base, I'm going to cause havoc for the pitchers, and that's going to give my team a chance to score. A big thing that was a transition was, I'm a very quick twitch guy, mm -hmm. my intensity guy, and I try to force results instead of just letting my body work and be athletic, 
And me being a high energy guy, I'm a very high energy guy. I had to learn to slow the game down mm -hmm. because this game is very hard. And if you try to speed up the game, that's when you might bobble a ball or you might misread a fly ball or you're jumping out of fastball instead of letting it travel. You know, this game is a game of inches and slowing the game down for me has been a big adjustment. And it's, and it's, it's just a lot of hard work has paid off. And I've just been trusting even when I slump, you know, Everybody has those slumps. Mm -hmm. You're gonna go through. I had, two weeks ago I was over 20. Oh really? You know, and I had like 10 strikeouts, but not once did I lose confidence. It was part of the process. Instead of panicking and trying to hit like somebody else, mm -hmm. or in the past that I would try to hit like somebody else, or watch videos of other big leaguers instead of watching videos of me, I got I went back to square one. All right, what got me to feeling good? You know, and that's been the big, big, big difference. Yeah, and I was just gonna say we noticed that too that you can leap on when you got off a really fast start, kind of slow it down. It seemed like you made an adjustment and you were back to just hit the ball all fields, and it was really noticeable. It's the same thing here, and I, you know, to have a kind of I admire that work ethic because you're right, this game is very hard, and here you are now. It's a little, a little warmer, a little, um, a little different than being down at Lakeland, but I'm sure that I mean, you're a West Coast kid. So this, this to you, I don't know if you like this one or not, man. <laughs> <laughs> 60 degrees, and you're wondering if it's always kind of raining, and it's not that way, humidity, but, oh. um, no, it's, and, and that's awesome, and what do you do to, last question, what do you do to kind of, off baseball, to kind of get your mind off, and kind of reset yourself? So I think the best, the best book there in baseball is the Bible, you know, um, a big, another big thing was, you know, focusing about what I can control, mm -hmm. you know, thinking about who's ahead of me, who's behind me, that's a waste of energy, you know, I gotta control what I can do, but I, what, 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 what can Eric be, what can Eric control when he's in the game? You know, me focusing on another outfielder that's in front of me, or that's just a waste of energy. That's not me working on myself. So a big thing I do is every day I read the Bible. I, I, I look at uh, Eric Thomas, uh, motivational speaker, you know, very good. Inky Johnson, you know, um, and before the game, you know, I have a Norman Tech at home. I put it on my legs because I need my legs. That's part of my game is my speed. And read the Bible, work out, stay hydrated, and every day is another day. Very cool. Well, Eric, thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it. Have a good one. Thank you.